but I'm going to put them up. Who's staying at the Marriott? All right. Does your hallway look like this? Does that affect you in any way? Does that bother you? These are, these are what I like to call Vegas carpets. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Vegas carpets are designed to make you stop looking at the floor where you're walking and look up at all the bright lights and the noise and the contraptions that are going on. They're designed to make you sick when you look at the floor. They want you looking at the games so that you will play the games. Vegas carpets do their job very, very well. But when you put Vegas carpets into a long, narrow hallway with this intermittent light, now brace yourselves, this is what it looks like to me. That's because I have what is called a vestibular disorder. The vestibular system typically refers to your inner ear, but it also includes your touch, it includes your ocular system, and how those three play together to create your inner gyroscope. My inner gyroscope is broken. Actually, in my inner gyroscope, the, it itself is not broken, but um, the interpretative language, you know, uh, my brain's in Ruby and I'm getting Java, okay? <laughs> so my brain doesn't know what to do with it. This is a pretty common syndrome. 35% of all Americans over the age of 40 have had some sort of temporary or, or chronic vestibular disorder. Some of them are as temporary as going out for a really good night of drinking. Who had a vestibular disorder last night? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we get dizzy spells that last a little bit longer. Sometimes you have them that last months. Mine have been going for a year and a half. I've got a friend who's nearly a dec decade into a vestibular disorder and not really getting a whole lot better and it's not going away. This is what we live with. Around Christmas of 2012, uh, I started getting little dizzy spells. At first it was 10 to 15 seconds, a couple times a day. As the winter wore on, it became uh, you know, a couple of minutes here and a couple of minutes there. Uh, by April, um, I was having quite a few dizzy spells to the point where I would actually fall into walls as I'm walking because I would be that off. By the end of May, I was actually carrying a cane. And I was dizzy all the time. I was so dizzy to the point that I'm seeing doctors and when they ask me what it feels like to be me, this is what I told them. I'm constantly on a boat that's rocking. And this changes throughout the day. Sometimes the seas are really calm, like in this little image here. I didn't want to get you guys too freaked out. Um, but sometimes they're much, much rougher, high winds. I get to the point where I can't actually stand up sometimes. As I'm going through this, my brain is trying to compensate for the fact that the Java language is coming in and we need to run Ruby. I get tired. I can feel energy drain right out my feet. I get confused. I get aph uh, aphasia. I almost had aphasia on that word for a minute. Uh, aphasia, if you don't know what it is, is when you have uh, a, a difficulty uh, speaking or receiving the words around you. I'm, I've become um, extremely I call it extremely forgetful, but the reality is, is that when my partner says things, I often just don't process them. Uh, I will be talking, and it's really nervous to be up here talking because I will forget words. I will forget entire trains of thought. I had one right at the beginning of this. You may not have noticed it, but I did. Aphasia can be really, really intimidating and a really scary thing. Your brain, you can see what's happening. You know the words that you want to spit out, but you can't get there. And on top of that, the fact that you can barely hold yourself up, and because your brain is processing so hard to try to hold yourself up, you lose the words and you lose energy other places. When I walk, 
I will tend to drift. I will drift to the right mostly. Sometimes I drift to the left. Around June of 2013, um, it became a point where I was so dizzy and having so many problems that I actually had to stop driving. Now, there are a few times that I have driven since then, but very short distances on routes that I know very, very well. I don't think I've actually driven at all since April or May, um, maybe a little bit longer. I, it's that hard for me to know. Um, it's hard for me to even sit in a car sometimes. I get nauseous, quick stops, quick starts, turns, flying in planes cause me to become physically sick because my body can't figure out what is going on uh, with the sensation around me. I no longer have the filters. I'm getting every sensation and my, bot and my brain just can't calm myself down. I no longer see straight lines. Most of the time, the horizon to me is actually tilted as much as 45 degrees. This is part of the reason I drift to one side because the world is going this way. I've gotten used to that and I'm learning to ignore that. But because of that and the fact that I can't drive and I can't walk long distances, I actually put in three miles yesterday and that is like huge. You know, for you to think, if you think about three miles, most of you, if you're using a Fitbit or something like that, you go 10,000 steps, you're going like five miles. And that's not really a big goal in the world. But if I go three miles, I'm completely exhausted. I was fried this morning. And uh, that wasn't just from staying up till midnight, but I was physically exhausted. Um, I get a handicap placard because on bad days, I have a hard time going 100 feet before having to sit down or lean against the wall. And sitting down is usually the case because um, I will end up locking my knees otherwise and uh, when I lean up against the wall. I'm getting a clue right now that I'm supposed to make sure my knees aren't locked. Uh, it's tough to live around, it, it, tough to be in the house and do regular things. Laundry, bending down to get laundry into and out of the washing machine out of a laundry basket, emptying the dishwasher, pulling a pan out so I can cook dinner, are all things that have become not impossible, but I have to sacrifice other things. I have to sacrifice brain power for work. I have to sacrifice family time. I have to sacrifice other cleaning. I may have to sacrifice taking a shower that day. I just don't have enough energy to do all of these things like I normally did. So back to stairs. This is an extremely scary picture to me. I have enough energy to go up three, four, five stairs. I have to think about everything that I do as I do it. Where's my foot gonna go? Where is my left hand gonna go? Do I have anything in my left hand? How can I hold it differently? Where's my cane gonna go? Every single time I take a step, I have to think about all of these things. I'm guessing most people here, when you're going upstairs, immediately stairs like this, would be like, oh, that's a lot of stairs. But when you're going upstairs, you don't think about these things. Most people don't. Stairs are just a normal thing now. We go up and we go down them. Going downstairs, I'm freaking out. I mean, when I first got here and I looked down into this uh, cavern of a theater that we're looking at, I almost had a panic attack. How was I gonna get down to the stage? Fortunately, the great people at Midwest UX already thought of that. There is an elevator and I know how to get to the backstage area now. So I was able to come down, but it was scary. So, a lot of times people are like, okay, so you've got this thing, what happened? Why do you have it? Vestibular orders, disorders can come from anything. It doesn't really matter. Honestly, it can be a night of heavy drinking and you just don't stop spinning. You could have Meniere's disease, which is a degradation of the inner ear. You could have uh, an ear infection that gives you a, a temporary uh, vestibular disorder. 
In my case, it actually came from headaches. As long as back as I can remember, I suffered from headaches. By the time I was a teenager, I got migraines. I mean, who, who, everybody gets migraines. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people get migraines. As a teen, you know, they would be at most once a month, and the worst time that I was ever down with, a, with the pain of a migraine was probably two or three days. However, about a decade ago, my migraines started coming every single day. And they would be short, really intense migraines multiple times a day. Pain centers never shut off. So this is a typical day for me on a pain scale, zero at the bottom, 10 at the top. My headaches never go away. At the top, I would get nauseous and I would get dizzy. Typical experience with a migraine. But in 2012, that Christmas, the dizziness started showing up regardless of the migraine. I still have the migraines. I have one now. On the bad days, it feels like Hiccup here has taken his flaming sword to keep the dragons away and stuck it straight through my left eye. It's not a pleasant thing to feel. My doctors gave me lots of medicines to take away the migraines. The only ones that worked left me hallucinating. I, I honestly, I started sacrificing what my house looked like. It was like, I could go to work, I can spend time with my kids, I can take care of my house. One of these things had to go. This is actually Freud's house, not mine. But, um, you know, it was quite disheveled at the time. I was put on medical leave. They were thinking, okay, well, we're going to take you out of work. Work seems to be really stressful for you. So we're going to take you out of work for two weeks. Um, I don't have two weeks to take off of work. So that's kind of stressful. Um, I don't have two weeks of uh, sick time. That's kind of stressful. Okay, I gotta take vacation time. Well, that's a good thing I don't actually take vacations. So I'm off of work for two weeks. They wanted me to hit the reset button. They're thinking, two weeks, no stress, everything will be beautiful, and we're gonna get those pain receptors to turn off. That didn't work. So, over the last 18 months, I have encountered more and more things in the physical world. I'm, I see them everywhere now. You know, it's like that you buy a brand new car and it's in that beautiful red shade and you didn't see anybody else ever driving it, but you get off the lot, two minutes later, there's 14 of them. Well, I see accessibility issues everywhere because these directly impact me. And what I want you to do by the end of this is I want you to start seeing them everywhere. So that when you start building things, they're gonna impact your users. So we're all familiar with the, oh wow, bad. <laughs> this is one of those automatic doors that says push the button to open, right? We're familiar with those, right? Um, here's another one, this is my bank. According to the ADA, that button is supposed to between, be between three and 12 feet. Okay, good, we got that here. It's supposed to be between um, uh, 36 and 42 inches on the ground, or 48 inches on the ground, we're just inside that. Um, so this is accessible by someone in a wheelchair, you know, in a sitting position, they can reach up, they can hit it. And it's also supposed to be that the door does not open into the path of the person hitting the button. Because this is more than three feet away, it technically doesn't, but you can obviously see the problem here. As this door swings that way towards the button, the person now has to back up and go around it. That's not too bad, right? What about this one? It's the right height, it's the right distance, but if I was in a wheelchair and I had to hit that button, what do I have to get around? Now this door opens out, so we have no swing path issue here, but we have, the, the story just doesn't care. They block you from actually hitting the button and getting to the door. A lot of stores don't care. Sometimes they don't care if the door works at all. This is as far as this one opens. And I'm about six feet away from, or maybe eight feet away from the door when I took this picture. The button was on a pillar three feet behind me. But it's not just accessible doors. This looks pretty familiar. We all go grocery shopping. Grocery shopping for me 
is a pain in the ass. I don't even do it. I don't think I've been in a grocery store in six months, and I have not done a full grocery shopping trip in 18 months. My partner does that, and I feel horrible for the fact that she has to do it alone. But it's better than me going with her. The noise, the bright colors, they all trigger my vestibular disorder and cause me to go into panic attacks and get extremely dizzy. But it's not just me that stick me concerned about. Ever notice how these things are stacked? Grocery store shelves and all store shelves are typically stacked in rows, not columns. So if you're stuck in a wheelchair and you're looking for the Oreos, the Oreos are gonna be set at a height that is equivalent to the average person's eye level which if you're in a wheelchair, depending on how tall you are and how big your chair is, might be out of your reach. If you're a tall person and you like the organic food, it tends to be on the bottom. And if you have a vestibular disorder, you have to bend down to get it. That's because they actually bid for the space on the shelf. The companies making the products will pay the stores to be within the sweet zone. And then the other places, the other people that don't pay them get the top and the bottom. This makes for a really bad experience for people who have disabilities. Now, if everything was stacked in columns and everything that was on the bottom was the same as what's on the top and in the middle, everybody wouldn't, would be okay. It wouldn't be an issue. But what about walking paths? You know, grocery stores have nice big wide aisles. Best Buy, Target, big wide aisles. You can get through those pretty easily. Whole Foods, they tend to put columns in the middle. I don't know why. But um, Pottery Barn, I, I wasn't gonna call out names. I'm gonna call out names. Pottery Barn, um, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna recognize the next one anyway. Uh, they pack so much stuff into their little mall shops that a person walking through sometimes has to turn sideways to go between things. If you've got a cane, that becomes even more difficult because you're used to supporting yourself and now trying to support yourself this way is really awkward. If you're in a wheelchair, don't even go in a pottery barn. You can't get through. This space up here is only 24 inches and it's a big space for pottery barn. It's pretty well known that if you have migraines, fluorescent lights are not very conducive for you. Um, additionally, as someone with a vestibular, pa vestibular disorder, this pattern throws me off. Additionally, the bright colors and the things hanging from the ceiling, the, uh, the uh, banners that say, hey, check out our new Halloween display that come up in August. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> or, the, or the ones that are the Christmas ones now. Um, yeah, Halloween was over, right? Um, so those, those have a tendency to throw me off. The bright colors distract me. Um, they're problematic for some people, and yet stores are constantly doing this. Everybody recognizes this store, right? Most of you recognize that store? That's a Target. <laughs> 